Hello, hello, and welcome to Live, Let, Thrive, episode number three. Yeah. What's going on? Uh, introduce yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> no, is that how we do it? I already forgot. It's been so long. So, um, yeah, this is Live, Let, Thrive, uh, a podcast about the Airbnb life and everything that entails. Uh, short term, long term, real estate, rentals, everything. So we just we just sit back. I'm, I'm Steve, and I'm, you are Micah, co-host. Yeah. Co-host. <laughs> I guess I mean it's in cement now. Yeah. It's it's cement is what I said. Yeah. And um, so we're gonna go with that. You're the co-host. Yeah. And I'm the host. I'm steering this ship. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this week we're actually gonna start this off with a uh, Airbnb story. Ooh. I've actually been <laughs> waiting to get this one off my chest for a while to Steve because I actually haven't told him. I just uh, I just want to say, don't screw it up because you built this up the whole <laughs> week, man. Now pressure is on him, so there he goes. No, it uh, kind of touches on uh, when we talked about, hey, should you rent out your car with your Airbnb? So, okay, I had a guest. She, she's actually going to be staying there for the, for the month. So what happened was uh, the other night, my wife was actually in Florida for the weekend, and I was pretty much at home with the guests and my son. So she is from Louisiana. She drove up, and she's here for a month. So she went to go out at night, you know, see the nightlife of Dallas. So I, about 12 o'clock midnight, I go to sleep, right? I'm dead to the world. And so my mom's actually at the house. for. She came in from Arkansas, and she had to go out and drive out in the morning to go back to Arkansas. Yeah. She wakes me up at 7 o'clock in the morning like, hey, uh, I'm getting ready to go. So I roll over, I grab my phone, I got these two long text messages from my guest saying she had been in a car accident. And I'm like, oh man, dang. And so what happened was, and I'm like, are you all right? I text her. She's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. And she's like, well, I've been at Denny's this whole time. Uh, The cops wouldn't bring me home because we're out of Tarrant County jurisdiction. So I'm like, geez. So I'm like, what what happened? You know, she's like, oh, well, I kind of told the cops, well, you know, I had couple drinks you know so i'm like oh, okay you had a couple drinks i'm like oh man she was drunk so she said she only had two drinks though yeah, yeah. so found out she hit a parked car on the side of the freeway messed up her entire car hit the car messed it up did like a 360 in the middle of the freeway totaled out her car oh. and she couldn't she couldn't get an uber said she didn't have any money she couldn't get an uber and then so she told the guy to take her to my house but she could he which he couldn't so he ends up dropping her off. At, it was an IHOP, actually. Drops her off at an IHOP, kind of close to me, like right on the edge of Tarrant County and Dallas County and Irvin. So I told her, hey, I'll come get you. She's like, no, no, I'm talking to the insurance company. They said they're going to get me a car. So I haven't heard from her from after that. I didn't hear from her for hours. I called her back. I'm like, hey, I still haven't heard from you. She goes, okay. She's crying, bawling out in tears. Cause she's been at this Denny's for like six hours at this point. This Damn. IHOP for like six hours. So I ended up having to go get her. We got her a rental car, and, like, she said she didn't have any money for the Uber. So when we get there, the dude's like, well, this guy, because I was going to give her the card so she could get, use my card to get the car. And the guy's like, you can't use this card. The card has to be in your name because you're going to be having the car. Yeah. And, man, it just turned into a fiasco. She ended up being able to get the car with her card because it somehow had money on it. Yeah. So it was turned into a fiasco. But I was thinking, wow, what if this was my car. car exactly like <laughs> dang man this is like i'm like yeah this is a no-go on the car thing man so <laughs> it turned it it was pretty crazy man so we actually got it all settled out settled out and got back to the house but wow. yeah she's pretty and much when a, was this again sunday morning oh this just barely happened yeah this just happened oh like, shoot yeah so it was it was pretty crazy, man. It was pretty crazy. God, so uh, she she had pretty much been at the Denny's for like nine hours, man. Like I was like, she. Just, I, I don't hop, think anybody should be <laughs> at a Denny's <laughs> for nine like, hours. I think you know, one hour is plenty. Yeah, it was bad, man. And she she's like bawling out in tears when I talked to her. I was like, oh man, I'm just like, I'm sorry I missed your text, but she's like, yeah, I didn't want to call you because it was kind of late and I knew you had the baby, and I was like, oh yeah, but I was dead to the world sleep, man. I was like, dang, I know. Well, that's that's good to hear these um, stories that happen on Airbnb because we talked yeah. the, the, the first couple episodes was, oh, man, it's perfect. You know, yeah, you yeah. use the word perfect uh-huh. and they come in, you hardly see him. You got to got to deal <laughs> with them and boom, something like that. Happens. <laughs> and we talked about the um, about about renting, you know, your car, car out and exactly. stuff like that and what could go wrong and this and that. And there you go. <laughs> everything we spoke about. 
came to fruition. Yeah, man. Wow. So, and, and you being the host actually had to step up and, and help yeah, her out yeah. and stuff. And that's good. I mean, you know, if that ain't a super host, I don't know yeah. what is. She'd be calling her buddies at 3 a.m. and they, oh, hell no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you're the, yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. You stepped up like that. Yeah, you know? she's like, you're the only one that could have called and helped. Because she has like no family here. So it was just, man. Yeah. Wow. You saved yeah. her. Yeah. So, well, maybe she'll rent from you again. Or maybe you don't want her to. <laughs> You're like, that's okay, man. You know. Yeah, but the thing about it is, me and my wife were like, man, maybe she kind of finessed us on the money thing because she was able to get the uh, rental car, right? And yeah. She kept saying she didn't have any money. So then Tuesday, her son flew in. And then she's like, oh, yeah, we're going to go catch a hotel and drive down to Austin. I'm like, oh, I didn't have any money. Dang. What the hell? <laughs> Up, man. So I'm telling my wife, man, I think we're getting finessed by the guest, man. Yeah, finessed by the guest. Yeah. That, that should be you should coin that term. I don't know if that's the term yet, but I like that. Finessed, finessed by, by the, the guest. guest. <laughs> so I don't know, man. That's, but she's she's pretty cool lady, but yeah, man. That's that that's weird. a great way to start off the podcast, you know. Yeah. Nothing <laughs> eventful happened in my life <laughs> since the last time. But um wow. Yeah, we're diving right into it, talking Airbnb, talking Definitely. Uh, the the short term rental world and yeah. so um yeah it, it's it's going good so far I think we're getting some good feedback from people yeah and um, we're feedback. getting some hits on the on the YouTube on the um well we got a Facebook now yeah we got, got the um, Facebook and the the big thing well uh, a website's coming that's yeah that's it's on huge. its way man but the big the big thing is we got it on iTunes now and yeah, that's we're official you <laughs> we're know, official can download we're, us we're doing something we love and getting paid no, we're not getting paid <laughs> but you know <laughs> maybe one day someone will throw some coin at us right i mean yeah, eventually it's bound to <laughs> it's bound to happen maybe yeah. hgtv who knows yeah you know? yeah but anyways so yeah we're um i've been doing all right i've just been working like a dog 12 hour days you yeah, know man. this and that and trying to save up you know a little extra cushion because i'm trying to buy that condo in padre still and that's a that's an ongoing headache yeah i think they got the flood insurance thing kind of taken care of and the bank saying that it's not going to go into effect the if the flood insurance until august 3rd so that, Ooh, <laughs> that i might have to wait geez. and the and the owners are and it's funny because like the owners of the condo they're of course they're getting um impatient and they're yeah, like you know yeah. getting upset and and I'm like, what, what What are they complaining about? I mean, right yeah. now is the prime season in South Padre Island yeah. to rent your condo out. So they're going to get all the prime season money. And yeah. I'll, when I close, that's when the slow season starts to creep in a little. And so yeah. and looking at it as, as a business person, you're like, wow, yeah. you know, that's that's um, that's a good deal for them. But I think may, uh, maybe they're just tired of the whole thing. Tired yeah, landlords, they, tired whatever you – tired hosts, you know, Because even at thing. that – it's the insurance thing. They would face it regardless of they're selling to you or whoever else, right? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and that's hey, what I that's mean, what my agent told him. Yeah, he said that. Well, they she, they got the whole complex to fix the insurance deal. Yeah, you might have to wait a few more weeks, but you got it fixed. Uh, if they didn't do that, you wouldn't be able to sell it anyways. Oh yeah. So, so, I mean, so nothing to just, complain about. Just, just gotta <laughs> sit there and be still, be patient. You know. <laughs> I said, go ahead, cancel, brah. <laughs> 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 Let your condo sit on there for another few months. Exactly. You, know, <laughs> sit, you already or, got a buyer? Chill. Or deal with it. Deal with it. Now, anyways, so we're going to talk about some, we got a lot of topics written down. Yeah. Of course, we're not going to reveal them. I, that, that, maybe that's a thing on just my end. Maybe you, you like to reveal I and know, tease. Go I, into it. I'll, I'll tell you about something real quick. And this is one of the topics I wanted to talk about was yeah. I used to be a big, I used to listen to sports talk radio. Like I used to just be hooked on it, man. I, I, it didn't. I mean, I would listen. I had all three stations in our area lo- on, you know, locked in my ch- in my yeah. channels. Okay. Know? I had the ticket, um, the fan, and um, ESPN Radio. I guess those, okay. those are the three in our market over here at DFW. And I would just, you know, as soon as a commercial hit, I go to the other one, go to the yeah. other one, go to the other. I didn't. I guess I liked the ticket a little bit better, but man, I just one day I was I was I was. I was working. I was working, and you know, sometimes I I drive a truck at work. Sometimes, yeah, drive um, parts, airplane parts, back and forth to the airplanes from where we're at, from the warehouse. And so, um, and I had you know, cool. I get to listen to my sports talk all day, you know, yeah. the radio in the <laughs> truck. And then, um, man, I listened to the morning show. I listened to the afternoon show. You know, I worked along. I think I worked a double that day. And then I was listening to the evening. Sh- I was like, 
they're doing the same exact stories mm. over, over and, and over. over and, and I just had that moment. What am I getting out of this? What, yeah. what the, and, and, and when that moment hit, it was actually when the Dallas Cowboys were big. I'm a big Dallas Cowboys fan. Yeah, like Cowboy the, fans. Yeah. Okay. We're, and, um, it was it was right when Dak, you know, Dak had won like five or six games in a row, you know, yeah. our quarterback, and that was like this huge, and I and I and it made me want to listen even more, and yeah, just but I just was beat down by the same. I was like, I'm not getting anything out of this. Yeah, I enjoy the Cowboys. I enjoy you know reading about them, hearing about them, but man, it's just I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. You, you got to find that one where you're talking about sports and you're talking about business. That's why. The last sports podcast I actually still listen to it, but I haven't listened to it in like a couple of weeks. Is yeah. the herd? That's the only one okay. I listen to. Okay. I listen to the herd because he talks about sports and then he mixes it into business. So it's kind of cool listening to him. And so <laughs> yeah, and, and what's funny too? Yeah, and um, sprinkled in them. There's tons of commercials on those because that's what most dudes are. Yeah. The big the the demographic demographic they all want to go to is middle aged dudes because we yeah. buy most of the stuff out there, and so <laughs> all these commercials. <laughs> uh, uh, was it what are they called? Those pills that you buy to help you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I was gonna say the street term for them. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, the yeah. the erectile dysfunction yeah, pills. Yeah, yeah. You know all the and these commercials for that, and then these other commercials for low T and all these things. Yeah. You know, then alcohol sprinkled in commercials, and I was yeah. like, this is it. This is middle aged yeah. dudes' lives that just listen to sports exactly. talk all day. Get home, watch sports all day. Okay. And just, you know, this is my, this is my existence. And I was like, yeah. no. And then I started kind of getting into the, when, when I really started, when I heard a good podcast on real estate and I was like, wow, this is all I want to hear yeah. until I, until I heard all 50 episodes and it just stopped, you know? So I had to look for more podcasts, it's, but, but after I got into the podcast, I was just, I mean, I just totally shut off sports yeah. talk radio mm -hmm. and I just, um, and and with these podcasts, I feel like you know you learn and you're yeah. growing and you, and you actually use it something productive, and, man. And productive, yeah. you know, and 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 it's the coolest thing. Yeah, that, that's what this podcast is all about. So be excited about it. You're learning something. Uh, if you want to dive right into Airbnb, you know, give you that extra boost of confidence. You know, because uh, there's a lot of people scared to do it, just like real estate. A lot of people scared to dive in there. Just got to do it. Just got to do it. Yeah, just man. Jump in. But um. So yeah, I went off on a sports cast. <laughs> a little <laughs> tangent there. I'm glad I don't listen to it anymore. And yeah. um, and I'll, I'll, if I if I want to know something, I might read an article or two that yeah. week before a game. And and I get everything in that one or two articles that those guys talk about regurgitate over and over and over and over. So um, yeah, that yeah. that was my past. Plus everything's on Facebook, man. <laughs> <And> everything <laughs> highlights <on> everything. <laughs> Facebook, yeah. So we got a Facebook. We got we got we got a yeah. We got, we got, we got coming on <laughs> up, man. I think the tea Moving is on up. the tea is hitting me now. I got, I got a lot of caffeine. <laughs> got that spike of energy through my veins, and yeah. so um, yeah. And you got some things you want to talk about today. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, we were going to talk about the. Uh, we were just touching on it a little bit. Uh, the fears of Airbnb. A lot of people scared to do it. Um, like I was reading a lot of blogs this week. A lot of people have like the wrong idea about it. Like I've seen people say it's not really a sustainable way of income. And I think they're really saying that if for those people going after like these strictly vacation areas like your Florida, it's like, OK, after a certain season of Florida season, Florida's going to have a down season. You know what I mean? Um, instead, me and you, we're looking at Airbnb in like an area that never has a down season, like the Arlington, Texas, the uh, Denver, Colorado, my even Miami, Florida, never a down season. You have oh, yeah. college. Yeah, yeah. You got college. You got uh Foot, football, basketball, everything. See, those are the areas people need to focus on. And I've seen a lot of people kind of like, oh, that'd be a good idea. I'm like, yeah, it's never a down season. That's what you're looking for with a short term rental. Never right. a down season, always booked. That's how you maximize your cash flow. You and, I, and I saw, and it's funny you should say that, but um, I was listening to another podcast and they, they were asking the host, they had a place up in Canada somewhere. Where yeah. it gets, you know, negative, you know, 50 degrees. Oh, <laughs> and they're asking no, them, how do they deal with their down season? Of course, they have the fireplace. They installed hot tub like you want to do. Yeah. And yeah. Um, just little things. And then, of course, they lowered the price just to keep people coming to their place. But I was yeah. and and I'll have to if I get that, that South Padre Island condo, I'll, I'll have to really 
really know my pricing good to get people in yeah. there when it, when it's not summer when it's not spring break you know yeah but it i mean like it's it's really nice the rest of the year and 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 um i've been there in january it's a little cool i mean it's uh-huh. like it might get like 60s you know maybe it'll touch 70 and it's and um and it's and it's you can't get in the water it might be a little cold yeah. but it's just it's a cool environment and if i could you know kind of get people to to see yeah, that your target's going to end up being the retired people in that time of the year yeah the, and that's that's when they're going to go they don't want to go when kids are out there the you know what i mean you know so so yeah. i need to get on the old people's website <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are they on friendster or you might want to hop on TripAdvisor <laughs> vrbo man <laughs> yeah so i think those are like my, most of the bookings when i was on vrbo it's where the older people are and that's usually where they're going for look for strictly a vacation rental right. you know and i think airbnb's past that there you can go vacation or you can go hey i just need somewhere to sleep for a few days you know so yeah, yeah. airbnb everything's open man so people new to this podcast um we we do just like a, a I, always, I always say freestyle like we're gonna yeah. rap or something yeah but um, <laughs> a free flowing you know just an exchange back and forth and yeah. whatever's on our mind and we try to you know talk about that and um Hopefully y'all get something out of it, you know. I yeah, think we, yeah. we get a lot out of it. I, I yeah, learned some things from you already, you know. Yeah. And um, oh, one thing I didn't compliment on your on your rooms because you you had sent. I haven't been to your to your place yet. Yeah. But um, and I and I wanted to ask your wife about this because she's gonna be on a, a show coming up. Yeah, and, she is. I'm excited about first that. Guess, you know, Miss Mahogany. Our first guest and. <laughs> <laughs> If she's better than you, I might have to replace you, if you don't mind. <laughs> Kicking me to the curb, man. <laughs> hey, you go with the talent, right? You know? <laughs> That's how it works, man. <laughs> how many bands got rid of drummers and bass players, right? Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but um, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, she. I, I will ask her about it. But, I mean, just the simple things, like in, in the rooms that you have there for rent, uh-huh. she put these these cool tapestries. Are they yeah. over the window? No, no, no. It's, it's not over the window. It's over the wall. Like okay, okay. My wife, she's decorator artist. She, okay. she does it all. I don't know what I'm doing. But if you would have just took pictures of a room, no matter, no matter how, you know, whatever, it yeah. had the stuff, it'd be like, oh, okay, just a normal room. But those, yeah. for some reason, those tapestry, and she put like, like it Christmas makes it stick lights out, man. It. I was like, whoa, that's yeah, a cool Yeah, it kind of has like the, uh, one guy came in and he's like, whoa, I want that as a tattoo. And I was like, <laughs> dang. And I was like, yeah, that, did, that would be a pretty tight <laughs> tattoo. You know, the little, that, uh, I think it's, what do they call it? The, um, I forgot uh, what they tribal call it. Yeah, yeah, tribal. Is it was it like tribal? a tribal symbol. Okay. Yeah. So those yeah. would be pretty good, but the decorating, it's all on her, man. That that was I ain't gonna lie, when we seen the pictures of it after she set it up, I was like, damn, that's a tight ass room. It's, it's eye catching. Yeah, it's it eye catching. It is. And um just yeah, just little things like that, man. Yeah. And um and I was gonna ask too. But I forgot. It just slipped out of my head right now. Ah, I'm, I, I'm, I want to look at the topics, but I'm like, man, we're just having a good combo here. Yeah. Um. So the rooms, the rooms look nice, and I was gonna ask your wife about that, and and she she actually participates a lot yeah. oh, in yeah. the Airbnbs, and that's yeah. and that's really cool. And yeah. that's why you know she'd be a good guest. She oh, can perfect guest, man. Bring the, she, the female pers- pers- you know. Yeah, because she, she drives it. I just <laughs> push the accept button, and she drives it, man. <laughs> Yeah. And that's and then with the um with the Facebook, I noticed that like right away she's already boom boom putting all these posts yeah, yeah. about live let thrive. You know, it's yeah, like she didn't waste no time. Man. Yeah, she goes <laughs> in, man. She goes hard for it. And <laughs> and what I've what I've realized too, I mean, I've done, like I said, I've done a podcast before. Yeah, I've been in a band before. I I've mm-hmm. done um I have an investment group, okay. and and it's. And it's cool, like when you start something to find uh, maybe maybe people seem motivated or whatever, and, yeah. and and the people that really some people fade off, fade off a bit. Yeah, you, know? you start and, you start to learn about yourself. Um, learn right. is this for me? You know, um, yeah, that's kind of what you learn. You learn if, if something's for you when you start doing it. You know what I mean? Right, right. So. And, that, and that's what I'm kind of excited because <clears throat> you're you're a higher energy dude. Yeah, you, you're, yeah. And, and so it's it's cool. Meeting someone like that, and we and we met at, at a. We did, I did a little meetup. It was actually yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at my investment club. You came to yeah, that yeah. first because yeah. you couldn't make the meetup, right? Yeah, you came yeah. to the, the other thing, but but to have um and that's just like just like forming a band, just mm-hmm. like you know any kind of group you put together, if you got to get the right pieces in it, you know trial yeah. and error, and you find the right people. And I feel yeah, I feel like we got a little a, a, yeah. a groove going here. Good connection, a, a yeah. Good connection, you know. So, you know, I'm the singer, your lead guitar or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. But um 
So yeah, and uh, what, what what else did you want to talk about today? Yeah, man, but mainly the fears. Another fear that I've seen people come across was the this one isn't true. And I think I've seen people who haven't done who haven't done Airbnb tell people who want to do Airbnb this. They tell them, "Hey, it's going to put a lot of wear and tear on your property." I'm like, "No, it's not." I'm like, "If someone's coming to stay at your house for three days, right?" Yeah. Let's just say they're renting out the whole place, and you in a lot of things that you can prevent. Like people are scared of parties. I'm like, just tell the guest, "Hey, you can't have a party." And two, I'm going to be checking in and out while you're there. That'll discourage them from having a party. Right. So people are fear that they tell people, "Hey, don't do it." People are going to have parties. You can easily prevent that. And people are putting that on like future hosts. They're like, "No, it's going to put wear and tear." I'm like, "Okay, listen. If someone's in your house for three days, you're in and out." Then after the three days, you're going to go in there and clean it. You think they're going to put more wear and tear than somebody staying three to six months? I don't like because look, no. how, you have exactly <laughs> you have you have your own rental property. I right? have a long term. Yeah. Yeah. How when was the last time you've been inside your property? <clears throat> man, it's been a couple, a few months. Three exactly. Months, maybe. Yeah. You don't know what's going on in there, man. They might got holes in the walls. <laughs> don't you know tell me saying? that, man. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to jinx you, but I'm just saying in general, though. Especially, I have to evict. You know. Yeah, you know, yeah. I have a long term tenant in my corporate, but I just went in there because she invited us over for a barbecue. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, yeah. You got so, a good one. Yeah, so I was able to see everything. She keeps it clean, but I'm like. Long term tenants, I think, put way more wear and tear on your property than a short term. You know. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. You're about to be in oh. there cleaning it the next couple of days. Plus, you're cleaning it. You're steady cleaning it. So, I you am know. dreading the turnover, man. And um, my <laughs> my tenants are starting to slip a little, so I might have to I might oh, have to man. handle up pretty soon. Kick yeah, them to that curb, man. Yeah, they, they already starting with the sob stories and the broken uh, truck, and then oh, man. you know what? You know what? Okay, so the guest who crashed her car, right? Right, right. She she wants to stay longer than when you know she wants to extend. So I'm like, okay, me and my wife are like, cool, you can extend as long as you want. But she always talks about these money problems and things, and mm-hmm. I'm like, look, mm-hmm. the good thing about Airbnb is you when you book, I get paid. So right, boom, right. I'm done. I'm like, okay, you can book as long as it's available, as long as you have the. You know, as long as you're able to book, but I'm because she's like, you want to close off days for me? I'm like, no. uh, yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> can't do it. I, I didn't say it like that, but I'm like, I really can't do that because I, I look at it as a business, you know, and I can't just bring my business to a halt, you know. Yeah. So and that and that's the beauty of of Airbnb because because yeah. um, I was listening to a cast today. It was actually the new the new BP dropped. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was well. You, you, you didn't check it out yet. No, I haven't checked it out yet. Uh, one guy and and what's and what's always interesting of, is when you okay you see the same you see the same um what's it called titles of each yeah. episode and how I how I bought eighty houses in the first day I started re- you know all those <laughs> stupid things and you're like yeah that doesn't happen eighty well, bills in my, two days my my parents gave me a little bit of money to start <laughs> yeah. you know there's always some caveat right yeah or you know you, you see these you know make I made two hundred thousand the first year yeah, yeah. You, you see you see all these titles and they're and they're cool and they're and whatever and they. But at, and at first, you're like, yeah, I want to yeah, click on yeah. that one. I want to learn how they did, you know. Yeah, yes, it, of course. they don't really go into, okay, they'll be like, some people be like, okay, I did 100 deals in one year. Okay, how the hell did you do that? You know what I mean? Like, right, right. you got some chips coming in on the side, what you got going on? You know what I mean? That's kind of yeah. where, yeah, that's kind of where people are like, eh, okay, you know. Yeah. They tell you the, how do I say it, the overall picture, but they won't dive deep into how they did it. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Like you got a couple of partners that are helping you. Yeah, how you do a hundred deals? Yeah, their, their mentor did it all, or something. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but so on that note, whenever I see one like you know, the nightmares of uh, you know renters or this or you know yeah. or the the hor- the horror stories or horror stories from from hard money or fa- hard money. Yeah. You know, I, I was like, oh, cool. You know, I want to hear yeah, yeah. The bad stuff, you know, so yeah. I can learn, you learn more from hearing an episode like that. Uh-huh. And this guy was talking about this, this one of his first deals. He bought this, you know, 10 unit monstrosity oh. and, um, and all the things look good on paper, but he had to start, you know, he inherited, um, renters inherited, um, you know, tenants. Okay. So he had to like, he had to like start telling them they weren't paying. They were used to not paying all this stuff. Oh, so he had to man. go in there and try to, you know, enforce these things and they wouldn't do it. So he had to put the, I mean, right off the bat doing all this yeah. crap, you know, and he had to um, evict them. And of course he said they trashed the place. They put holes in walls. <laughs> they, they ripped <laughs> right. toilets off the hinges. And I was yeah. like, 
man, I, and, I, and I just started, you know, thinking of my my spot. And I'm like, yeah, man, I want to get so, oh, I so bad want to turn that into an Airbnb just so yeah, I won't have to Because you hand them that 30 day notice, man. That's 30 days of 30 sweating, days man. Of like, hey, are they in there <laughs> jacking up stuff? <laughs> what? Cause, and they even talk about that on Bigger Pockets. They're like, yeah. um, they've paid people to leave. Yeah. They say, if y'all are out by Friday, here's $500. You know, that's a good you don't, idea. They, and it is because you don't have to pay for the court fees. And, of yeah. course, that encourages them not to destroy your place. Also, with Airbnb, a lot of people don't know this. If your guest is staying over 30 days, you do have to give them a 30-day notice the day that it's supposed to be their 30th day. Like, okay, my guest right now, she's staying 42 nights. Yeah. So when the first hit, because she's checking out the 31st, the first hit, I had to hand her a 30-day notice. And I always explain that I have to do that so they're not taken back by it. Like, hey, you want me out? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so because there's some Airbnb stories from people didn't know that, and the person squatted in the room. <laughs> Man, I, that one in, uh, was it in Palm Springs that, that that made the news? Those guys, that they were actually from Austin. Really? These computer programmer dudes, they went yeah. and squatted at this. They did that in Palm Springs. And California has some real strict... Um, um, squatter laws, yeah, you know, or real, real eviction or, laws. Ev- eviction laws. Yeah, yeah. And they were they were there for like a year or something, and not paying Man. a dime because they stayed after that first month, you know. Yeah, and uh, that made them automatically a long term rent. Yeah, and people started, don't know that. And they tried to, they had to try to evict them, and they're over here hitting them with this, hitting them with that, yeah. taking them to court, saying this is unsafe, this is un-. and he and the and the worst part of it, I mean, it's it's all bad. But the dude couldn't even cut off the energy, electricity, water. He still had to wow. pay all that stuff because you can't do that if someone's in your house and yeah. you're evicting them. You can't turn off their stuff. Yeah. And he had to keep the he had to keep the high speed internet going too because <laughs> they said this is our livelihood. We need this to. And he had to pay all that stuff on top of his mortgage for these clowns Dude. to stay there. And his <laughs> see, I, man, I'd be pissed if that happened to me. <laughs> and, and Airbnb tells you that though. That's the one good thing about it. They tell you, hey. They're staying over 30 days. It's up to you to give them a 30-day notice. So I just went to Rocket Lawyer and got something off there. Nice, Handed nice, it to nice. them. So, yeah, you got to be careful with squatters, man. They're, they're real, man. <laughs> Especially those ones in Detroit right now, man. Oh, oh really? Yeah, What's... yeah. I think you can squat for a whole house, man, in Detroit. No. Yeah, no. people are squatting. Go squat in a house for 30 days. Like, you didn't see the guy on the Detroit News? Uh-uh. Oh, yeah, man. The lady left for like a month. She came home. They were in there grilling and everything else in her house. <laughs> I got oh, we got to show you that video, man. She's she's like they're in there frying up a bird, kicking, cooking, and having a good time in her house, man. Playing dominoes and everything. And she couldn't get him out. No, she couldn't kick him out. So they're squatting. <clears throat> for, so for how long could they stay? Did they did they say? She, I think I don't know how they work in Detroit, in Michigan, but I think she may have had to have them a thirty day notice, and that gives them that thirty day rain period. I'm not sure though, but. With Bear B and B, be careful. You do have to give them a thirty day okay. notice. Um, it's good to know. I'm glad I know someone in the in the know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? If y'all have questions for Micah, you know, hit up the show and and ask him because he knows some some lawyer things. He's not a lawyer. Uh, we can't. We have to say that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, don't I don't know too many lawyer things. I'm, I'm a Google guy. <laughs> the Google guy. And one, one thing I was gonna ask. You know, oh, I heard, I heard a cheesy a cheesy question. I was gonna say okay. cheesy ass, but I, oh, I did. <laughs> that ain't too bad. You know. yeah, I heard this cheesy question, and, it, and maybe it's not so cheesy. And um, and um, I guess the lady asked it like this. I, I can't even read my own writing, but she said she asked the 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 Airbnb host. Okay. So what is it? What does it mean to you to be an Airbnb host? <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> Oh, I have to I say to my Brian. I, I said I, I put a note to say to my Brian Gumble voice. But Brian Gumble yeah. voice. <laughs> so, what does it mean to you <laughs> to be an Arab host? That's a pretty good impression, man. It is. <laughs> no, like I've, I've heard that question. I actually heard it while I was driving over. I heard it. Um, hospitality, man. Um, it is cool because you do get to meet different people from all over the world. Um, the last guy who just checked out today, actually, he was actually from where I'm from. From Washington State. And oh, cool, we cool. We were able to talk to him for a few hours. Like, oh, you're from Washington. He's like, yeah, I recognize your number. So, yeah, man. So, it's pretty cool. You get to meet a lot of people. Like I said, the last time we met peop- a couple artists, got some free tickets. Uh, it's being hospitable. That's pretty much what it is, man. Cool, cool. I'll find out one day, <clears throat> and I'll yeah, have, yeah, like, man. the best answer to that question, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, 
the zen and, and you know, <laughs> and levitate the guests to newer heights and stuff. You know, and 420 friendly. Yeah, 420 friendly. Yeah, you going that route? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. If, am I old? Yeah. Am, well, yeah. no, I don't know. I will see. I, 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 Texas is a weird thing, man. And they're pretty strict yeah. on stuff. Well, if he was in California or oh, Portland, yeah, well, yeah, Washington, Port- Oregon. I put it on my yeah, front, yeah, my, yeah, yeah, my headline, yeah. you know, yeah, 420 you friendly. Know. You do it here, then, you know, the cops kind of bust down doors here, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, by the way, just for any cops, we are not 420 friendly. No, <laughs> especially my next door neighbor. He's a killer cop. So. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Not a killer cop. I hope oh. I hope not. Yeah. Keller. <laughs> Keller, Keller, Texas. Keller. Keller, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are not 420 friendly. <laughs> So the so that was the the other cheesy question. I'm just you know picking and choosing from shows and grabbing their questions and asking yeah, them to yeah, Micah. Yeah, you know, yeah. we do a segment called Ask Micah. <laughs> <you know. And laughs> yeah. So so I, yeah, that same dilemma that I'm in and you're in. So with your guests or with your people, are you going to evict them or? I see, and that was another thing I heard on a, on a cast. I, I wouldn't even say I heard. I mean, I'll just say I heard because yeah. everybody knows that's all I get everything from his podcasts. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> <clears throat> so he was saying, and, and and I got comfort in this because some of them were, they, they were reminiscing about, oh yeah, I had to do an eviction. The other guy said, yeah, I had to do it before. And the first one's so terrifying and this and that. Oh yeah. my God, you know, I hope they don't ruin that. We'd have to go to court. And, but he goes, but by the, you know, by the tenth one or whatever, you've done them before. You 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 know how it's done. You realize yeah. it's a business, and it's part of the business. So if it push comes to shove, I might have to do that. But I think they hopefully they'll be cool with um with just leaving on their own. You know, leaving on okay. their own thing. I mean, but we'll see. I mean, they they I'm gonna get part of it tomorrow. Part of the payment tomorrow. Got it. Well, see what's slick too. I didn't know this. I mean these some of these tenants know how to do the play the game i'm oh, sure yeah, there's a lot do, of know man. how to play the game on it have you ever rented long term before like long term yes before corporate but i was actually making a bigger mistake than you because i was renting to family so Ooh. <laughs> Ouch. yeah yeah Ouch. so uh Ouch. not only they know how to play the game they know how to play the family card <laughs> man you know you vic me man we're at the thanksgiving table you know <laughs> So yeah, man. I um, back in my in my house, I guess kind of before even whatever, I was thinking about doing real estate. Yeah, I I, I got some roommates. I had some roommates, and I kind of had to do a little evict my, my evict my family out of my house kind of thing. Oh <laughs> man, yeah. You know, I rented out a room to a buddy, and he paid all the time. And and my other, I won't say if it's a cousin or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But they, um, like week one, they lost their job, oh, and so I got man. I got rent that first week. Second week, I got like a little piece. The third week, there was nothing. <laughs> He's just sitting there at home. But what, when that stuff happens, what pisses me off the most yeah. is they'll be coming. They'll be coming home with a twelve pack of beer or some McDonald's or yeah, some man. pizzas, and I'm like, well, you can't pay rent, but you're spending all your money. See, on- in being in their shoes, I mean, yeah, people start doing that. See, and that's. That's the bad thing when you ever, you, ain't, you can't ante up, man. People are gonna be watching everything you buy, man. Like, hey, man, you wouldn't got that number one, man. I do a fourth. That. You supersize that <laughs> with the large drink, man. Hold man. up, man. For real, <laughs> man. For real, dog, like, where'd you get this from? <laughs> and one of the things my um, my current tenants did the first month, okay. They they scrambled up enough money for the thousand you know it was like a thousand down right I, yeah and then so they moved in first month's rent you know they paid first month's rent second month came ar- month came around they paid it <laughs> yeah right over there you yeah know, yeah sorry getting a bunch of bookings over here I'm just like they're coming in like right <laughs> when we're doing yeah, it it's crazy that? you hear that money <laughs> in the background <laughs> Mike is going go ahead, ching man. with I'm his like, fist wow, over here he's like, yeah. In? And so um, he's showboating now. No, no, so, no. <laughs> scoreboarding me. And so um, I'm over here telling you my heartbreaking, you know, renter story. And you're over here, I'm making bank. No. I'm making. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you over all this money. <laughs> and so, um, anyways, what, what they did that 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 second month month rolled around. Yeah. And before the rent came, and she's, hey, could I ask you if I could pay if I could start paying you every two weeks? Mm-hmm. 
And in my mind, I guess that, well, that doesn't mm. sound too bad. I, you should, should go pay half the first two weeks, half the second. You know, when I get okay. paid, yeah, yeah. I said, okay, that doesn't sound too bad. And so she would, um, she started doing that. So the first couple months, it went good. Yeah. The following month, the first installment was a little bit dragging, a little <laughs> bit late. And yeah. I started thinking, it was like a couple of days late. And she paid the first installment and the next installment, you know, a couple of days. And I'm like, yeah. okay, really? I, I started thinking about it after like the third or fourth month. Now she's getting a little bit later and later on each one. And she still yeah. paid them. But I was like, well, this is a way to kind of like avoid late fees by setting it up like that. Because cause you oh, might, because in, yeah. my, in, my, in, my, um, in my lease that, I, that my buddy helped me, you know, he, he has like a program. Yeah. And um it said after after four days, you know, it, the rent is accepted, you know, inspected on the first, but after four days, it's late, you know, kind of thing. Okay. But by breaking it up like that, she kind of bought herself some more time. Yeah. Uh, uh, not only just every two weeks, but like, but like after that first installment, I mean, I, yeah, I, that's another four days. That's another. That's like eight days, kind of late. Plus the, you know, I was like, Man. I, that was kind of slick. How old are your uh, renters? Current renters? I would say she's about. She's in her forties, and then 40s. she has some adult kids in there. I w- what I would do, man, I would just change up the way I take payment. Um, what I do is I got two things: I write up a lease agreement through um, eForms, and then I relate that lease agreement to my Cozy app. And then on my Cozy app, if you haven't attempted to make that payment on the first, I can tack on whatever amount per day for right. you being late. Right. So whenever you pay. It's coming out of your account, you know? Right, right. So, yeah, it kind of... The internet or technology's kind of made it a little bit better, you yeah, know? Yeah, So, yeah, just... It, it, here's the thing, though. I mean, and I and I, and I should have done that from the very first, you yeah. know, be a stickler to the late, you know, a mm-hmm. couple of days late. I should have be okay, here's when the $10 a day comes in or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> and But I haven't been. And, it, and it, yeah. you, they, like they say, you got to train your tenants, right? Yeah. And um, so it's kind of hard to like jump in and do that now, especially when they're they're like they're kind of like scrimping, you know, struggling just to make the whatever they owe. And now I'm going to start throwing late payments on yeah. top of that. It's it, it could get it uh, spiral out of control. But yeah, but you got to stick to that. I, and it is my first time. The first time yeah. I ever rented out, you know, my house. Uh-huh. And so I'm learning. I'm learning all these things. Yeah. And, and we'll see. I told her this month, I said, well, I got to get all the money in this month. Yeah. Next month, I said, I can't have it happen again next month. And she's, oh, I understand. I understand. Of course, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And I'll keep you updated. I'll keep the <laughs> yeah the, <podcast laughs> the listeners updated. 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 I know they're, I hope she's not one of them. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think she is. I, I hope yeah. Not. I hope none of my guests start listening. They have a better TV than me, man. <laughs> Oh man! Big, ass, big screen TV, <laughs> man. They've been there playing the Xboxes and stuff. Oh, you got man. some stuff to sell to get some rent. I, I know, right? <laughs> you better start anteing up. That TV is mine next month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, that's the one thing with long term tenants as well, man. That that pay period. You know what I mean? You got that chance to do that Airbnb. Boom, right up front. And even at that, with Airbnb, you can still get a long term tenant. You know. Yeah, you know, yeah. and people people forget that, you know. <coughs> but so there, there's my long term. Yeah, I'm man. I'm really, yeah, not liking it so much. I, if I would have got like a perfect um, tenant, maybe yeah, it'd be all right. I wouldn't be yeah, one st- yeah. wanting to jump in. Yeah. But it's like a perfect storm happening right now. I feel it. Yeah. You know, I I really want to jump into Airbnb. The condo thing's dragging on. It could take till August till I get the condo. Mm-hmm. But these people might I might be having to ask them to to step out. And also, I have this house. Of course, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of, you know, fixing up. But I, I and but it'll be just in time for football season. Yeah, <laughs> everything happens for a reason, man. <laughs> football season's where it's at. Everything happens. For everything a reason, happens man. for a reason. Straight I, up, man. I, I, I like that. And yeah. um, yeah. And what else? What else? What else would you want to talk about? Because I, I could, I got a whole bunch of topics here. Oh yeah, man. Go shoot. One, one you, thing. You, one thing I did. I did want to um, bring up like strong on this show and I might even put it in a show note kind of thing, whatever. Yeah. But um, what, what is travel? Tra- I mean, Airbnb is all about travel, of course, obviously. Yeah. And unless you're written down the street from your house for some reason to, to start an illegal prostitution ring, <laughs> and, <laughs> which that never happens. Episode one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a little bit. Episode two. Yeah. Um, now episode three. And so anyways, um, 
travel it, how has how has it changed since we were kids yeah and I'll, I'll i'll let you i'll ask you about your travel experiences when you were a kid how your parents traveled mm. how you travel now wh- how you traveled when you were single or whatever yeah. and now how you travel with as a family yeah. so how you know those now, three things as a child um my parents bought a timeshare when i was six so after that we always travel with the timeshare cool so we we could go to Disneyland, wherever, you know, it's the one I rent out now. Now, when I was single, I still use the timeshare. They let me use it. When I was single, uh, adult, I'd go to Vegas, kick it, you know. Nice. Now, as a family, we kind of do the same thing. Um, I haven't used an Airbnb yet, which me and my wife were like, okay, we need to use an Airbnb because we kind of got to get used to the guest process because I ain't right. going to lie. Sometimes guests will ask me like, I'll pre-approve them the book and they'll be like, so how do I accept the pre-approval? I'll be like, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I was like, man, just kind of look at the uh, screen, see if there's an accept button. So there's a lot of things as a guest perspective. I don't know. And there's things as a guest perspective that you do know. And that's why I think we're such a good tandem. You know what I mean? Right. So dynamic yeah, duo. I, I like travel. That pretty much do is in my timeshare i'm not like the typical millennial the typical millennial they're probably using airbnb you know what i mean yeah um yeah. i think most of them are because most of the people i get they're usually millennials people also single people in their early 40s a lot of them seem to use airbnb as well yeah those yeah. are a lot of my guests so. and, and, and it, it hit my life as as at a perfect moment airbnb came into my life at a perfect moment because I was coming out of the whole college, let's travel cheap, let's go all yeah. in on a place and rent some condos somewhere. Like, yeah, I, I guess um, you'd, you'd find them online somewhere. I don't know how they, my friends found them, but they'd always find some place. Hey, you know, it costs like 300 a night, but we get 10 of us in there, you know, yeah, we'll yeah. all split it and we'll have a, a, a badass condo on the beach. And um, so we would do stuff, we would travel like that, yeah. you know, and then um, getting into the workforce after college. Well, I was always working, but... But, you know, just doing that full time and then starting to travel a little bit more. You start doing hotels. You start being a little more grown up, I guess, getting your own hotel room yeah. and stuff like that. And then um, and then it um, then Airbnb came along and and that was right when, you know, I, j- I didn't get into the expensive, expensive hotels yet. I never did. Yeah, that. I never me did. Neither. That. I kept it. I keep it, you know, 99 or below. <laughs> kind yeah, of thing, yeah. you know? <laughs> And so. um. So Airbnb comes along and it's like the cheaper prices It's kind of and, and and it felt like it felt like college again in yeah. a way because you could rent, you know, like I said, rent a room from somebody. Yeah. You can go in with some people, get get a badass spot or a badass house somewhere, yeah. you know, and um, on the cheap and we could and more money to, yeah. to do what you what you want with. At you know excursions, go yeah. you know go what, whatever, check out the town and stuff, and um, have a good time. Yeah. And and so it's just um, it's really changing. I don't know. It's it's changing the travel industry as a whole. I think. Oh and, yeah, and, and definitely. As, and so we, with 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 so many spots around the globe that you can rent for for cheap. You know, you yeah. can go farther and farther away. And you like can. and and um and of course I work for an airline, so I can travel uh, all the side of the world and stay anywhere for thirty forty bucks. You know, oh, Europe's. Man. Europe's like crazy cheap, you know. Really, I don't. I don't know about all. The, well, there's some crazy cheap places here too, but yeah. But most everybody rents out a space, uh, rents out a room in Europe. Hold on, man. man. We may be going in deeper business, man. So hold on. Do you get passes for other people to fly? We get. Yeah, we get some. We get some. See like, if we get the passes plus the rooms. Boom! We can make this something big, man. Hey, I'll, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking yeah. I want to get a spot somewhere else, you know, other yeah. parts of the world. And and that was another topic on the thing was like uh, our favorite. Like, I don't know if you have favorite spots in the world. Um, like, what's the the best? The, your favorite places to uh, travel to? Right now, the coolest place I've been right now was Canada. I eventually, me and my wife are eventually going to make a trip to Accra in Ghana. We're eventually going to get over there. Oh, wow. But I don't know how the... I'm pretty sure... I don't know if they have Airbnb yet, but we eventually want to go to Accra in Ghana. That's one place that's on our destination list, so... Wow. My buddy... Yeah. Um, see, I work... In, yeah. Of course, I work at Airline. And uh, a lot of my friends, a lot of my uh, co-workers, they, they travel like crazy. And, and really? my and my buddy, Maurice, he, he, huh? he went to Ghana a few months ago. Really? Yeah, he, he, yeah, saw, man. he saw the new, the new president get... Um, Whatever, where they do the whole ceremony yeah, and stuff yeah, like okay. that, and it's yeah. showing me all these pictures. It's pretty neat, man. Yeah, yeah. It does get like. really hot over there. He says, "Oh, really yeah. hot." 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I heard it's kind of like deeper than Vegas over there, man. Yeah. But yeah, those are, but those are one of my, that's one of the destination spot I want to go to. Um, but as far as how I travel, I pretty much do the timeshare thing. And then me and my wife may sometimes grab a hotel if we don't have a timeshare in that place. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But like how you were saying with, hey, you get 10 people, let's get a room. Like that's how Airbnb is so cool. Cause like, for example, when I was actually for the Super Bowl, we were actually going to get a uh, a house, but my cousin ended up buying a house. But we found a house. It was like two hundred thirty bucks a night. It sleeps like fifteen people. So we were like, oh, we can get that three nights, split that amongst ten, fifteen people. We're good, you know. Right. And, right. and I think Airbnb's kind of brought that back. You know, people rent out their entire house three hundred bucks a night. That's nothing if you can get ten people in there. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And also with the smart pricing, I also noticed. I think that's kind of how it works. They look at how many places, how many people your place can hold, and then they judge your price off that. Like, I think you'll get a green price. Like, let's say your place holds 10 people, right? And you're pricing it at 175 a night. They'll give you a green price. Like, okay, that's cool. That's good. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I started to notice that trend. I noticed it with my timeshares. Once I had like, this place fits 10 guests. Okay. You can price it at 175 bucks a night, and it'll give you a green rate rating. And what that also does is boost your listing. So that's pretty cool too. Nah, that's nice. Yeah, nice, nice. yeah. So. And um, so I was gonna ask you too. I don't know if I don't know if I already asked you, but do you use Instant Book? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I use it only on my two personal properties, my room A and my room B. I don't use it for my entire upstairs because. If you instant book that, I have to instantaneously go in and block the other two rooms. Oh, so okay, I okay. don't use it on that, and I don't use it on my timeshares. But, yeah, for my rooms, I do use instant book. I just make sure I put those parameters in there. They have good reviews from other guests, and they've issued their government ID. Um, like, some people let random people instant book. Uh, hell no, I don't know you like that, man. And I've heard horror stories about that, like, one lady, actually, I was listening to her podcast. She lost her super host status because she canceled the instant book because she didn't really feel comfortable with the guy in the picture. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, I mean, I use it. I love it. Well, that's yeah. cool. It works out for you. Yeah, yeah, it works. But um, I, these, these are the things I want to figure out when I get mine. If I'm going to use instant book, I'm, I guess with the, with where I'm at on the beach, I think it'll be okay. I like yeah. a beach condo. Um, also... It depends on your turnover. Like, okay, you're going to be rambling rem- remotely, right? You're going to yeah. have to make sure you're cleaner. Well, are, also, are you going to have it so where there's a day unavailable after someone checks out? Uh, I wasn't thinking of doing that. Why should, yeah, I, so should I do that? Probably if you're doing it remotely. Because, <clears throat> like, let's say, okay, for example, someone checked out of my house today, right? Yeah. Someone can check in today after four. Because we do, we clean it right after they leave. Yeah. So you're doing it remotely. You have you're to trust your. That, that yeah, you got to hope your cleaner is going right in there. Boom, getting and they, it fixed up. And, and they always say yeah. uh, on, the, on the podcast, they're saying always have backup cleaners. You know. Yeah. A back, yeah. Or one or two. You know. To, yeah. In case she can't do it. Yeah. And so, or she or he or whatever. But um, yeah, that's a good point, man. To, yeah. But so I don't want to lose that day, though. I want to have it. I want to book as many as I can, you know. So if you're gonna do that, just make sure you got that cleaner there to do it, um, because that we don't leave block off any days in between. Yeah. So okay, you can instant book. So like someone checked out today, my wife automatically went up there and cleaned up the place, got it ready for the next guest, got everything how it was, and then boom, it's ready to go. Right. So right. let's say someone tonight comes in 10 o'clock we get a request hey i want to stay the night they can do it or i want to stay the rest of the week they can do it so right, right. yeah instant book I, a lot of people don't like it um i've heard super hosts say they've turned it off because they don't like anyone because you have to you do have to manage your calendar if you do instant book you right, gotta right. manage that calendar like if you got something coming up like today someone booked for next week and i'm going to be in houston in about two weeks she booked Luckily, she's checking out the day I leave to Houston. And I was like, oh, I told my wife, like, dang, we got to block off those days. So I blocked them off like, oh, the rest nice, of them after nice, that. Nice. So, yeah. Because um, what else is going to say about that? Uh, that slipped my mind. Go ahead. Say something. <laughs> yeah, 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 man, man. So just it requires a little bit more. You're more hands on when you instant book. Cool, cool. Yeah. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, y- you mentioned something about 
should you buy a spot or sublease? You know, that's the big question, right? A lot of people Ooh, sublease. Man, like subleasing, um, it, it's it's good if the person allows it, if the owner allows it. Um, I don't know how many no's you're gonna get, or if you do it under the table. I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't suggest doing it under the table because you know Airbnb's just someone just put the article out. The Aimco is trying to sue Airbnb. They're going, and who's that, Aimco? They're a property management company out in California. Okay. Uh, but don't worry, they're going to fail miserably because what they're doing. Okay, they're they're going to sue Airbnb because people are subleasing their apartments. They're, but Aimco is a property management company. You can't sue Airbnb. You can evict evict, evict the tenant that's subleasing your space. They're right. instead of they're trying to cut the head off the snake. They're like, we uh, know what's Airbnb doing it, but like, but their biggest argument, and I still don't think it'll hold up, is Airbnb's making money off of this. You know, they're making a profit. Right, right. So, right. Uh, with subleasing, I'm I, I'd be more interested to sublease than to buy if you can get a yes. That's the biggest thing. Um, apartments is going to be hard as hell to do that. I think you'd be better getting a house. You know, because I was trying to sublease, which I didn't talk to him about it because he ended up finding a renter. The guy who lives across the street from me, I wanted to sublease his house and then Airbnb it out. But I never got a chance to talk to him because a couple of days later, yeah, he found somebody. So I think it's I think it's a lot of money in subleasing. A lot of people don't like it. I noticed I was reading a form today. A lot of people don't like they're like, no, I don't like somebody coming up off my investment. I'm like, oh, come on, man. You get paid anyway. (laughs) Seriously, man. Greedy, man. Trying to take all the money. But, but, um, see, if you look at it in the terms of you're trying to build something, I guess you could see as, as buying a better option because you're, you're getting these properties paid for and you're building like your little, your equity, your empire, whatever. If you just keep subleasing everything, yeah, you you make money. You're not Uh out a lot of money, but you're not really gaining, you're not Mm. equity. You know, you're not gaining these places. And at the end of 15 years, if you do 15 year lease, you're not going to really own them. You're just going to keep subleasing them forever as every year the rents go up. You That's know what I'm true. saying? If you locked in something for a thousand bucks a month in 20 years from now, it's still going to be a thousand bucks a month, the mortgage, yeah. right? And you, and, but of course you could charge more yeah. by that point. So that's, I guess that's where, you, yeah, it's, it's one of those bad. things. You kind of got to average it out unless you were doing <clears throat> lease to owns. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. what I was talking. That's a, a, that's a great way to like dip your foot in the water, see if you like it, yeah. see if this place is profitable. And if it is tell go to the owner, Hey, you know, owner finance me lease to own yeah. or we'll go to the bank. I can just buy it straight up from you, whatever you, you know? Yeah. And, um, so uh, I guess you got to work. It's good to yeah. work every angle you can. I, I would, I, I would profit. do the lease to own route. That seems like the most profitable, you know, and you're going to get your equity. Right. So. Right. Do you allow dogs? No. <laughs> uh, just straight up no, dog. like, uh, even at my condo, I get that a lot with my corporate rental in my condo. Yeah. Um, two or three people a month come to me like, Hey, I have a pet. Um, the only reason I say no is because we have a really, really nice carpet in there and I do uh, not want okay. to get jacked up. You know, um, I'm a no on the dogs, even at my house. I do no on the dogs, uh, no on pets. I mean, and that's something you kind of got to struggle with for a while. Cause a lot of people love their pets. Right. Like right. my mom loves her Yorkies. I'm like, <laughs> nah, I can't have them. Cause she, she has a bunch of Yorkies, she has like three or four Yorkies. So y'all have dogs. No, we're getting oh. one. My wife, we we had a Yorkie, but uh-huh. we ended up having to get rid of it because we lived. We were in an apartment at the time, and oh, okay. yeah, it wasn't going too well. Yeah. So we're eventually going to get one, but I say no on it. It's just too right. much of a risk. Something can go wrong. Pee, poop, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So. And that's and that is it's funny you should say that because I was when I was. I, I don't know. I, I would call my mentor a buddy of my work that rented out yeah. his his old his house in Arlington, which is closest stadium. I think he should Airbnb it, but he he don't want to go that route. <clears throat> he don't want to go. He, it's What's his peak. fear? <sighs> he just I, I I don't know. He just I, I told him about it and everything. He's like, nah, nah. I'd rather have a long a long term renter in there. He just oh. he just wants to do it old school way. He just always you know. And he's he told me about um, because I was asking him. All right. I think mm-hmm. I got this renter, you know, and, and I told the story in episode one yeah. that it just kind of this renter found me out of the blue when I just put it out there that I'm about to move, you know. Yeah. And um, so I, I said, I think I got this renter. What should I do? What kind of questions do I ask him? And and he said, oh, I got the software and this and that. And he goes, he goes, be sure, be sure to ask if they have a dog. Yeah. 
and what kind of dog. And so, because you don't want no, you don't want no pit bulls, you know, showing up in, in yeah. your house or whatever. And so he went ahead and um, he went. I, I I called her. I was like, this is when I was getting a little bit of the red flags going on. And I called her. I was like, um, do y'all have dogs? And she's like, um, yeah, we got we got two dogs. I was like, well, what what kind of dogs are they? She's like. Uh yeah, they're pit bulls. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, yeah, like, pit bulls. Yeah, I don't allow dogs. I told her, I just told her straight up, I don't. I'm sorry, I don't allow dogs. Blah blah blah. And uh, and I was just thinking of all the liability, especially with a pit bull. You know, let's say uh, they keep it in the backyard. It, you know, it mauls a kid or something like that. Oh my god, uh, who's that gonna, gonna fall on? You know, yeah. I mean, they might sue these people who don't have any money, or let's sue the homeowner. You know, for allowing these people to have these vicious dogs. Yeah, my uncle is actually going through that right now. Um, his, his story was actually on the news in Portland. He he has like three or four bull mastiffs in his backyard that he keeps back there. Yeah. And they just had puppies. They had puppies a few weeks ago. And the neighbor's daughter, who's eight years old, she would come back there and she would steal the puppies for like a few days and take oh, them back to her house and bring no. them back. But like his fence, he has an electrified fence and everything around it. And what happened was he was gone out of town. She turned off his electric fence. The little girl. Yeah, the little girl. She was nine years old. Oh, okay. She turned off the electric fence. She went back there. She went back there with the dogs. And, like, all the female dogs mauled her. Almost killed her. It was a bad story. Almost killed her. Like, ripped off her scalp, everything. She's still in the hospital. This just happened. But I I don't know if the dog. But they found out. They took all the dogs from him. And they found out it was the female dogs that did it. So I don't know if it was an aggression from like her messing with the puppies back then or what. Yeah, yeah. But man, and now they want him to get rid of his dogs. And I don't know if he's renting the place or owns it, but yeah, it's it's hell with dogs, man. Like especially like bull masters pits, you know. And I know all pits aren't bad, you know. I'm not one of those people, but right, right. You know, it's you go through a lot of crap, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, so they coming after him with like lawsuits and stuff too, or no? Because uh, he wasn't home, and the little girl, she turned off his electric fence. Like she had to literally, she pretty much kind of breaking was breaking and enter into to his property, right? Because she and, turned off the electric. And fence. I guess her parents weren't doing nothing to prevent her from doing that, or they just. I, I know. I'm surprised because my wife, you know, she's a CPS. She works for CPS, so she was like, "Hold on, hold on." They didn't get a CPS case on the parents because I'm like, because I heard it happened like nine at night. Right, right. So the little girls just walking around the neighborhood night at night, turning off electrical fences and going to people's yards. Like, where's the parents at? You know. I know. So right? yeah, so it it, it it can get tough with dogs. Man. Yeah. No, I hope she it. gets better though, man. That's I bad. hope so. That's that's terrible that's for everybody sad. involved, man. That's yeah. Right. That was a rough segue there. Yeah, <laughs> still, yeah, yeah. I'm My bad. Real, take it a little dark for no, you. No, but that was a good story because yeah. I'll never hearing that, especially I'll never allow dogs. I yeah, just, yeah. Just any. I mean, it's just it's just not worth it, man. Yeah, I, and I have me. a little dog. I love yeah, my yeah, little yeah. doggy, but you know, it's just um, yeah. Travel without your dog for once, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Board I mean, the yeah. darn thing. Do you have any more on your list that you wanted to to mention? Man, man, he's getting I, blown. I mean, for the record, he's getting blown up over here <laughs> by these <laughs> these guests that are that are wanting to rent out his spot, and and, and it's cool. I love yeah. seeing it, and I'm envious, and I really want my Airbnb. <laughs> yeah, man, <laughs> really it's coming, man. It's that. coming. I want to get. Th- um, that was mainly my biggest thing were the fears. I've seen just so many people going against it. They're going like your friend, for example, who's going the traditional route. Like, I'd be interested to hear why. You know. Yeah. Um. You're in Arlington. There's nothing holding you back. Like, nothing. You're in the hot spot. That's where right. everyone wants to be right now. So, just I jump in. Just do it. Just yeah, <laughs> just jump in. I mean, I don't see the point of renting your place out long term. You can make two to three times the rent. You know what I mean? I was going to ask you about your calendar because that, that's what I was going to ask. Okay, um, go ahead. Because you said you got to really keep keep up on the calendar, right? If you use Instant Book, yeah. Right, and 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 you're doing, but you're doing like Home Away also, or you were doing Home Away. I don't do it as much. Okay. Because that's, that's what I was wondering. If someone did the home away and like oh, another it, one and Airbnb, oh. how that calendar would all, I mean, that would be hard to they do. They have export and import features. They all can sync together. Oh, nice. Now, nice, this nice. is the biggest thing about VRBO's calendar. It takes forever for it to sync. And people have been complaining about that for the longest time. I don't know if they fixed it because I don't use it as much. Right. But like Airbnb is cool because you sync, put a calendar in Airbnb, it syncs automatically. Yeah. Boom, it's right there. And you have a little button you can push to sync it, to resync it. 
even with VRBO, when you resync it, it might not take automatically. It, I, it was taking like 24 hours, and I've seen people get pissed. Like they'll get double bookings. Now they got to cancel somebody. You know that puts them in the bind as a host. So yeah, the calendars. If you use multiple platforms, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I might go back to VRBO, but I think they kind of kicked me off because I was kind of rejecting a lot of bookings. So right, they right, kind of right. kick you off after that. But yeah, it's pretty. It's fairly easy to manage your calendar. You just gotta. Just got to stay on top of it, especially if you use instant book. Stay on top of it. Cool. Well, that's about. I think we should wrap yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. Wrap it up. Pretty man. good show. Um, we 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 went light hearted. We went. Uh, we talked about some rough stuff going on. You yeah. Know, with my uh, my rental going on right now. <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's really frustrating, man. It it yeah. sucks. It sucks if. And there's people out there that that are listening to this, and I'm sure they've been through it. I mean, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. there's just um, people like like when I when I rented apartments back in the day, man, I just I, I had to make that payment. I don't care if I, did, I had to eat ramen noodles or whatever. Man, that's how I you had th- to make that dang payment, and then I just knew that that's one thing. Yeah. I did uh, that eviction. That was that that word, you know, yeah. scared me, and I knew I wouldn't be able to get to another apartment. You know, yeah. if I had an eviction on my thing or whatever, yep. and that's you know that's what's cool about Airbnb. It monitors these people that are that are trying you know messing up people's places. Yeah. But but there's just some people that aren't programmed that way that they they try to get out paying rent. You know, mm-hmm. they they don't know how to manage their money. They they just spend it on whatever. I don't know. I'm not trying to judge people, but yeah, but mm-hmm. people just um they put rent on the back burner <laughs> yeah. for whatever reason the most important thing is this thing covering your head that where you're yeah. sleeping at where your family's safe at right Definitely. that's the the one payment you can't miss screw your credit card screw whatever i mean i'm yeah. saying not pay your stuff <laughs> but that's the one thing you got to keep paying you need a yeah. roof over your head but people just aren't some people aren't yeah. programmed that way, it's, and it's frustrating. It's, it definitely sounds like you're ready to get out the landlord <laughs> mentality, man. Seriously, am, you're, really, I, I you're so ready to get am, out of it, dude. man. I don't understand that because me and my wife are having that dilemma with the guest who wants to stay, and she's like, my wife's like, look, I really don't want to be a landlord. I'm like, me neither. I'm like, I, I, that's for the birds, man. You can have the landlord stuff, you know. But And that's cool, yeah. and you never have to deal with evictions. You, you yeah. don't. I mean, yeah. in case some crazy stuff happens, Yeah, I don't the know. 30 days, but you just hand them the notice, and boom, they're out of there, but. And they're out of there. Yeah. Sweet. So I learned a lot, and um, hopefully pretty soon in the next few weeks, I mean, well, I'm not saying hopefully I get to kick them out. Because <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully um, stuff gets sorted. Stuff gets sorted with my with my um, my rental in Arlington, and hopefully um, the stuff gets sorted with the thing in Padre, because I'm kind of tired yeah. right now. I can't really do anything if, if I see like a screaming, uh, a nice deal, a good deal pop up. I can't do nothing. I'm tired. Yeah. I'm tied to to both things right now, so you know that's about me. You know, I'm over here, you know, crying my crying my heart out <laughs> over here. And but then, SPI will work out for you. <laughs> South Pond, P- Padre will work it, out for it, you, man. It's the, it's the juxtaposition. And I use the big yeah. college word there because I'm over here, like you know, talking about this stuff, and you're over here getting Bing, Bing, Bing. All oh, these people man, wanting I don't to be like that, out. man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, I want to be that. I want to sit on yeah. that side and get those yeah. and get the wow. You know, they're booking. I'm getting all happy and stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because that's got to be that's got to send endorphins in your head. Just yeah. got to be like a, a a high. You know. Yeah, yeah. It people is, talk man. about that. Oh, they can't wait till the oh someone wants to rent. You know. Oh, sweet. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And so, anyways, yeah. That's the you're seeing both sides today, people. It's, yeah. You're seeing both sides. It's Airbnb is better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So do it. Screw long term. Yeah, kick all kick all your tenants out. <laughs> kick all your people. You know, whatever, and and, and just rent Airbnb. Everybody, you know, there it's you all go, share. Man. It's all share and care. <laughs> all right, and this is some someone put something in my tea today. I, I am very sure that uh, might have been me. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> on that note, yeah, man. we're on we're on Facebook. Yeah, we're, Facebook. We're on YouTube. Yep. Live, let, yeah. thrive. <laughs> You know, I was t- I was telling someone about the podcast the other day, and I, was, and I was telling them, you know, it's called Live, Let, Love. And I was like, no, 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 no. That sounds like a Julia Roberts movie or something. <laughs> it's Live, Let, Thrive. And I even told you, I was like, um, I was like if, sure we ever got our, if we ever got our um, HGTV show going on, you know, <laughs> and, it'll, and I said, oh, we could be called Short Term Heroes. And you're like, oh, yeah. man. I wish that would have been our our podcast name. Yeah, <laughs> before we went and set everything up, man. But yeah, we're lit. So let no one steal that because we're gonna use that on our HGTV <laughs> show. Let live thrive. This let is episode three. Live, uh, let see, 
Live, let thrive. <laughs> live, let. Oh yeah, see, that's kind of, kind of hard to say. <laughs> say it fast, it is, man. It is. Live, let thrive. Okay. Live, let thrive. Hey. Yeah, we're on Facebook, uh, YouTube. Um, where else? We Facebook, YouTube, and websites coming soon. Um, also, if you want to uh, get in touch with us, we do have a new number you can hit us up Uh-oh. at. Oh, phone number. Send a text. Or, yeah, send a text or yeah, send a text. Uh, four six nine. There, I'm sorry, real quick. Is there is there voicemail too? Yeah, that? there is a voicemail. You okay. can also oh, leave a voicemail. Leave a voicemail. Well voicemail. I can hook that up to the Pro Tools, and uh, you can hear your your beautiful voice asking us a, a really stupid question. So, <laughs> or, or Man, an intelligent was, question. I just I'm not judging. Yeah, that was, that was bad encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> While we ridicule you and you can't <laughs> respond because you're just a little voicemail right there. What's up? So uh, hit us up at 469-300-9100. This is Let Live. Let, <laughs> I'm sorry. Short-term live, heroes. <laughs> live, let thrive. This is your host, Mike and Steve. And we're out. Peace.